He got banned because got caught sexting a minor in the then existing Twitch Whispers product. He was trying to meet up with her at TwitchCon. The powers that be could read in plain text. Case closed gang. This is a very serious and damning accusation that has been taking the internet by storm. It is from Cody Connors, somebody who previously worked at Twitch at a very high level. And the accusation is being made at a very popular live streamer who goes by the name Dr. Disrespect. Now, in California, where Twitch resides and Dr. Disrespect resides, the California Penal Code 288.4 says every person who, motivated by an unnatural or abnormal sexual interest in children, arranges a meeting with a minor or a person he or she believes to be a minor for the purpose of exposing his or her private areas, will be met by a fine not exceeding $5,000, by imprisonment in a county jail not exceeding one year, or by both the fine and imprison imprisonment, Penal Code 288.3, they go on to talk about how that then becomes a felony. This is one of the most serious accusations one could make about anybody online. A claim that anyone is sexting a minor is not only gross, it's a felony. And the fact that this is being made, it's un unacceptable, it's immoral, and it's illegal behavior. And that's what people are saying Dr. Disrespect did. That is the rumor, that is the conjecture, and there still isn't any proof. Let's talk about what's going on right now. This all began right around the time when Dr. Disrespect was signing a multi-year deal to stay on Twitch. It was sort of at a time period in the industry where everyone was fighting to sign big streamers like Ninja, like Dr. Disrespect, and get them locked into multi-year contracts. What's interesting about the Dr. Disrespect situation is they dropped him shortly after this announcement. On the day of the decision, Twitch released a statement that read, as is our process, we take appropriate action when we have evidence that a streamer has acted in violation of our community guidelines or terms of service. These apply to all streamers, regardless of status or prominence in the community. As for more detail, on the day of the decision, a Twitch spokesperson said they were not privy to any additional info at the moment. Since June 26, Twitch has declined multiple additional requests from the post to answer follow-up questions. Now, in addition to his ban with Twitch, he was also banned at Discord or lost a Discord sponsorship, to be more specific. Through a spokesperson, Discord told the Post that partners are held to a higher standard than typical users and issued a statement similar to that of Twitch. Discord partners must abide by our code of conduct, and when violations occur, we take the appropriate action. The company declined to comment on their rationale for ending the partnership. So this adds another layer of complexity to the entirety of the situation going on with Dr. Disrespect. I believe Shannon Liao, we've had Shannon on the channel. She said the following, Titch's statement on the ban, as is our process, we take, an appropriate, we take appropriate action when we have evidence that a streamer has acted in violation of our community guidelines or terms of service. These apply to all streamers, regardless of status or prominence in the community. In terms of the internet and what the internet thought was happening, a lot of people were hypothesizing that this was about a contract dispute. At the time, Mixer existed and Mixer was trying to snap up a bunch of talent. They were getting paid a bunch of money and you know Twitch was trying to sign people up and everybody assumed this was some sort of contract dispute to try and lock in Dr. Disrespect. However, there was always a bit of a cloud under the whole situation. Rod Breslau said, look, for several hours now, I've been told from credible sources, the reason Dr. Disrespect has been banned, however, due to, due to the importance and sensitivity around the subject, I have refrained from going on it. I don't feel comfortable with it currently. That was from June 26, 2020. And also 
in June, on June 27, 2020, uh, I managed to find a screenshot because Dr. Disrespect has deleted all tweets before 2022, as near as I can tell. It says Champions Club Twitch has not notified me on the specific reason behind their decision. Firm handshakes to all for the support during this difficult time. That's from Dr. Disrespect. That was the next day. And we wouldn't know until this was two years ago on August 23rd. We would not get a statement, but apparently Dr. Disrespect learned something and he was uh, let's just say he didn't seem the happiest about it. Here is his reaction when he was letting his audience know that he discovered the reason for his ban. I can't talk about it, but a lot of people ask me, do, do you know the reason? Yeah, I do know the reason why now. I've known for months now the reason why. And I'll just say this right now, champs. There's a reason why we're suing the fuck out of them, okay? <laughs> Uh, I don't know how else to put it. The amount of damages and, and you just don't... No. No. Um. God, uh, for a second, I, I, I... Anyways. So that was his reaction in the moment. The first time he ever revealed to the public that he actually had some sort of idea as to why he was banned. And the claim in 2024 is that reason was for sexting a minor. That's what Cody Connors is claiming. Now, Hogue Law has actually talked about this topic a bit. And one of the questions that keeps coming up is why would Twitch not reveal this information? Well, one of the reasons from a legal standpoint would be that they would be heavily implicated. Twitch wouldn't report it because if they did, it would be exposed that they read users' messages. I don't know about the legality of that, but they also, more importantly, cannot verify the ages of their users. The elements of negligent interference with prospective economic advantages are the existence of an economic relationship between the plaintiff and a third party containing the probability of future economic benefit to the plaintiff to the defendant's knowledge of the relationship, the defendant's knowledge actual or constructed that the relationship would be disrupted if the defendant failed to act with reasonable care. And that is very important. The defendant's failure to act with reasonable care, actual disruption of the relationship, and economic harm proximately caused by the defendant's negligence. So not only are they in trouble because they failed to act with reasonable care, and this would be Dr. Disrespect suing Twitch, but based on what Hoke has said, they've opened up sort of a can of worms here where they're not able to do it. Now, there is the moral argument about what Twitch should have done regardless. They are owned by Amazon, a very wealthy company, and we are talking about a minor here. You would think that that company would expose any type of behavior like this to the world. However, the only update we ever got about it was this. I have resolved my legal dispute with Twitch. No party admits to any wrongdoing, Dr. Disrespect. And you would think Twitch might have said something, but basically they released the exact same statement. Twitch confirmed the settlement in an almost identically worded email sent to PC Gamer. Dr. Disrespect and Twitch have resolved their legal dispute. No party admits to any wrongdoing. And that's basically all we heard about it for years. But I find it very strange to see the type of actions that the people who had this information were taking, given the severity of the claims being made. Twitch CEO Dan Clancy joked three months ago about how Dr. Disrespect was possessed by aliens. Here he is giving an interview with Ms. Kiff talking about the situation. Go, damn. After completing the Hot Ones challenge and defeating the last challenge for the last app experience, the ch Twitch chat wants to know after all these years, why was Dr. Disrespect banned? Ah! 
<laughs> wow, I've never had that one. That, whoa. Well, now that I'm on Miz's channel, let me tell you what really happened. Okay. So, um, there was an alien invasion. Okay. okay. Many people did not know about the alien invasion. Okay. Wow. And um, uh, the aliens actually um, uh, possessed Dr. Disrespect. Oh. Okay. Does that seem like a conversation about soliciting a minor or not soliciting, texting a minor about sexual favors? Because that's the claim that was made. And just to recap, Cody Connor says he got banned because he got caught sexting a minor in the then existing Twitch Whispers product. He was trying to meet up with her at TwitchCon. The powers that be could read in plain text. Case closed, gang. He elaborated, no one made the dis wrong decision. F him and his boys. It's such a contrasting demeanor between those two interviews. You have the CEO of Twitch who obviously knows why he was banned and you have cody connors who is having a, a reaction to it three months after that interview took place uh rod reacted to the the breaking news story about the claim he said i didn't lie and we have many journalists coming out saying without revealing anything else in order to protect sources i can say that this is not the first time i have heard basically this explanation nor is it the second or third? So Nathan Grayson has talked to three separate sources or heard on three separate occasions that that is the case. Uh, Destiny also in April had this interview clip posted where the same claim was made. My memory is really bad because this was like two years ago and I was in Outpost buying a mini copter. Okay. And I remember someone saying, Doctor's Disrespect got banned from Twitch because he was messaging underage Whoa! girls on Twitch. Why he said that? <laughs> Wait, what? That isn't, that's not it. <laughs> That was in April and no one really reacted to it. It is somebody talking about playing a video game and overhearing a conversation in Rust. I don't know, like, I don't really understand the context there, but it's now been said by a former Twitch employee. Destiny talks about it again on June 21st. I don't understand for the Dr. Disrespect stuff. Um... <clears throat> I feel like I've heard for so long people say that they were worried about like potential lawsuits or whatever bull bullshit. Uh, I don't know why they ever felt that way. I'm not sure if there's like some other part to that story that I, I just didn't hear, but um, this story has been known since basically Dr. Disrespect got banned. Um, I'm surprised that it's been under wraps for so long, considering I think about a year ago, I started to hear about it from people that I wouldn't expect would keep those secrets, but yeah. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I feel like there's got to be more to it, but who knows? So Destiny is basically like, yeah, everybody's known about this for four years and didn't tell anybody. I'm kind of surprised too. Uh, Dr. Disrespect reacted to the initial accusations saying, Jake, seriously, I get it. It's a hot topic, but this has been settled. No wrongdoing was acknowledged and they paid out the whole contract. Jake Lucky says a former Twitch employee has come forward and stated the alleged reason for Dr. Disrespect's permanent Twitch ban being for sexting a minor in the previous Twitch Whispers product. Now, we're going to come back to that phrase, no wrongdoing was acknowledged because I was curious, why does he keep saying that? Where is that specific term, that, that specific string of words is, is very succinct and it, there must be a reason behind it. Uh, continuing on, he actually did an updated tweet later in the day that said, listen, I'm obviously tied to legal obligations from the settlement with Twitch, but I just need to say what I can say since this is the effing internet. I didn't do anything wrong. All of this has been probed and settled. Nothing illegal. No wrongdoing was found. And I was paid. Now, if it's true, and we go back to California Penal Code 288.4, every person who violates this basically would be committing a crime. It would be committing a crime. And if you go over to 288.3, there's actually more caveats to it. You need to attempt to contact a minor. 
you need to intend on committing a listed felony with the minor, which includes the acts that I imagine sexting would involve. Uh, you knew or should have known that person was a minor. Now, that's where things get a bit complicated because you start talking about Twitch and Twitch's ability to make sure that somebody is of age, but they only verified a 13. So the confusing part is why would Twitch keep it under wraps? It has to be because they feel liable. And this is just my guess. This isn't any sort of concrete evidence or anything like that, but they introduced this whisper system and maybe they don't have adequate protection for children on children on Twitch, which I think is a true statement regardless. In order to register for a Twitch account, you must be at least 13 years of age. If you are the parent or legal guardian of a child under 13 who has become a Twitch services member, you can contact Twitch at privacy at twitch.tv to have their account terminated indefinitely and personal information deleted. Please also include any information which may help us in locating the account. That's the policy that they have currently on their website about having minors on their website. So that's, that's just is what it is. Uh, Cody Connors also has come under fire a little bit, and this does nothing to reduce the validity, validity or non-validity of his claims, but it doesn't make Cody look great. It makes him look very bad. Actually, he was teasing selling concert tickets to reveal this information. If you like my very niche insights on esports and content creation, then you would love hearing me play guitar loud as F touring with these people. Maybe I'll get so swept up in the spirit of the music. I'll blurt out why we banned him. And that was in 2023, October of 2023, less than a year ago in uh, December, he teased again, slasher, Slasher being Rod Breslau, who we had mentioned previously in this video, was apparently going to be there with him. So I, I, using some common sense, potentially one of Slasher's, one of Slasher's confidants was Cody Connors because apparently they're touring together. I don't know that for a fact. I'm just guessing based on the fact that apparently they're good friends. Slasher is coming to the New York date. That's a 500 person room and we're like 70% on presale. I always act out around Rod. If that show sells out, I'll 100% explain why we banned him during the set. Uh, in July, he did it several times in 2023. Listen, if all three dates sell out, I'll tell you why he got banned. So there's three separate instances throughout 2023. And then in June of 2024, a lot of people are like, oh, his NDA must have been up because it's been four years since the announcement. I mean, that's a potential answer. There's no evidence to su support that there was any sort of NDA involved, but he just seems to randomly reveal it. So you have Cody making jokes about this situation, which later in June, he would find so upsetting that he has expletives about doc you have uh dan talking about this with Ms. kiff on his channel and joking around about dr disrespect getting outed by aliens so now we're at today today being june 24th 2024 the clock just rolled over midnight so it's actually a day after and dr disrespect his initial comments on his stream were a lot different than his closing remarks. And there's some theories about that that we'll get into in one second. Here's what he said when he kicked things off. For those that are looking for me to expand on this weekend, not gonna. I already said what I needed to say. I don't give a fuck about this guy. That's the long and the short of what he had to say about the situation. However, later in the day, I clipped out a segment where he had received a text message or he looked at something off screen after he defeated a boss. He eats a cupcake that I believe his daughter gave to him. He receives a text 
and something happens where he says, we need to step away, just completely remove myself from the scene. And he even talked about removing himself from the Midnight Society. Here's how that went. Champs, I'm gonna call it right there. A little short one, we've accomplished some things, but uh, I think more importantly, we need to step away. I think I, when I say step away, I think, I mean, I'm going to have to. Either have to relay this to the Midnight Society, but I, you know. Maybe I step away from there too. Just completely remove myself from the scene. Now, what's really interesting is this happens after he gets some sort of message. Now, I've actually seen a lot of theories online. Uh, there was a stream he did a few days before where, where people were saying he was getting like raided by the police or something like that. Obviously, that seems to have not been true as he was live Monday and seemed to be taking it in stride. However, almost exactly one hour on the dot or around one hour, we'll say. I don't have the exact times when his stream ended and when the post happened. I know the post uh, happened uh, around one o'clock, I believe. Uh, Midnight Society announced that they have ended their relationship with Dr. Disrespect. Here's what they said specifically. On Friday evening, we became aware of an allegation against one of our co-founders, Guy Beam, aka Dr. Disrespect. We assumed his innocence and began speaking with parties involved. And in order to maintain our principles and standards as a studio and individuals, we needed to act. For this reason, we are terminating our relationship with Guy Beam. I actually don't know how to say his name immediately. While these facts are difficult to hear and even more difficult to accept, it is our duty to act with dignity on behalf of all individuals involved especially the 55 developers and families we have employed along with our community of players. That is a drastic action to take uh, based off of rumors and conjecture. Now, Robert Bowling, who is one of the, the higher ups at the company, had been talking about this the night before. He said he was collecting all available information to act on. He said make act on but we know what he means uh he said he was he had this long thread with somebody he said don't twist my word swear word i'm very articulate this specific allegation is news to me and warranted new questions which i'm asking i don't give a f if you're offended by me asking questions when new details are provided to me i don't need anyone fixing anything there aren't any new details. You're trying to play nice with the cancel mob, and it's honestly pathetic. You think you're savvy businessman catering to all sides when in reality, you're being the two-faced B. I'm literally not catering to either side. That's what's upsetting you. Pro-doc people want me to blindly side with him. Anti-doc people want me to blindly outcast him. I'm doing neither. I'm talking to him personally and collecting all available information to make act on. I have to imagine he was saying to act on, but I don't want to paraphrase. That's what he said word for word. And then literally the next day, Midnight Society drops Dr. Disrespect, AKA Guy Beam, in this Twitter post that has taken the internet by storm. There are a few other things that I sort of wanted to bring up because XQC, also had a reaction about this uh, a few days ago saying there is a document of some sort. Now, these are all people who are saying things but have not provided any evidence. And we have to be careful about our emotions and how we feel about the situation and recognizing that no actual evidence has been provided. Here's what XQC had to say. And I mean, it goes for no matter what side of this you're on, due process exists for a reason, but there's also the court of public perception. And I think without a doubt, 
Dr. Disrespect has lost in the court of public perception and he's lost without any evidence being provided to show that it's truthful. It's a lot of people saying, I heard X, Y, Z. Let's hear what XQC had to say. Chat, chat. Some document, something tan. Okay, I'm not, guys, I know a bunch of information. Okay, I know a bunch of shit, okay? And I'm not saying shit, but just one thing, some document, something tangible um, was like communicated like today to a bunch of people, uh, to some people. And it'll, it'll probably come out um, super um, soon. And it'll probably make things clear. So we don't know what this document is that they're talking about, but if we go back and we see that Midnight Society is is discussing the fact that they they claim to have seen facts that allowed them to react this way. Well, these facts, they're talking about the facts of the situation, I suppose. So they use the word allegation. We assumed his innocence and began speaking with parties involved, Twitch and Dr. Disrespect. And in order to maintain our principles and standards as a studio and individuals, we needed to act. For this reason, we are terminating our relationship with Guy Beam immediately. This is the most damning thing that has happened thus far in this story, because it is a company that Guy Beam, Dr. Disrespect, founded, who said, we're parting ways with him. He tried to make it sound like he should leave the company. They made it sound like they made the decision for him to leave. That is a very big, big disparity in the story. So let's talk about the terminology used for a second. There was this one story that I found where I actually found somebody else who said no wrongdoing was acknowledged. This has nothing to do with the case. This is an indie star and they were talking about some bar that closed and it's the only other case where we saw this specific, very specific phrase utilized. An indie star story published Tuesday also raised questions about the club's ownership. They talk about, uh, the things that they were charged with the case was settled for $400,000 and no wrongdoing was acknowledged. So there it is again, where else have we heard it? No admission of wrongdoing contract clauses. This is from Justia business contracts where you can see no admission of wrongdoing. The parties agree that neither this agreement nor the furnishings of the consideration for this agreement shall be deemed or constructed at any time for any purposes as an admission by releases of wrongdoing or evidence of any liability of on or unlawful conduct of any kind. And there are several versions of no admission of wrongdoing and why that statement is likely being utilized. Apparently it is a common statement uh, that lawyers use. There was also a retired lawyer on Quora of all things. Why do all out of court settlements include an admit no wrongdoing clause? Simple admitting wrongdoing in one case would slash could be admissible against the party in other related cases. There's absolutely no incentive for a defendant to admit any wrongdoing in a settlement. The reason very specific verbiage is being used by Dr. Disrespect is because he cannot say anything. If he does, he will get sued. At least that's the thought process I imagine that is happening. And based on what these lawyers are saying, it is likely what his lawyer is recommending that he says. Superlawyers.com also had a little bit more context. A business settling out of court doesn't mean admission of guilt. So they're not admitting to guilt either. So this raises an important question. Does a business look guilty if it settles a legal claim? The short answer is no, at least not in the eyes of the legal system, though the public 
relations considerations are more complicated, here's an overview of some important things that businesses should know about settling a legal dispute out of court. Legal rule, neither settlements nor settlement offers are evidence of liability. Settlements typically are when neither side is happy, says Mark T, a business litigator in Denver. That's how I always explain this. The settlement is both sides giving up something to settle. The plaintiff would want to assess blame. And as part of the settlement, that's never a condition. Whatever the terms of the agreement are, nobody wants to admit wrongdoing. Dr. Disrespect doesn't and Twitch doesn't. So they must have landed at a stalemate. When to settle and when to litigate, a case-by-case -case matter. The amount at stake the likelihood of liability and the objectives of the business. Exposure is a key consideration in terms of financial outlay or exposure to the public interest. For example, could or should have the client acted in a different manner in connection with the complaint of behavior or is the conduct plausible such that it is explainable in the context of the allegations. Next, businesses should be aware of the impact on the company and its policies and procedures, he says. Will it alter the course of the company to such a great extent that a settlement should be considered? If it comes out that they let Dr. Disrespect go because they are unable to properly vet the age, and this is me guessing, just to be clear, of their users, that could open Amazon and Twitch to a massive lawsuit that they do not want on their hands. We can go back to the children on Twitch. They have this page where they're like, hey, if you find out somebody's under 13 years of age, get them off the platform. Parents, here's how you get them off the platform. Uh, and there's a lot of posts about that. There's two other things that I just want to say real quickly about the topic, and then I'll give some final thoughts. Due process is a legal process in the United States. All parties involved in the matter are in California. I actually don't know where Cody is, but I'm talking about Dr. Disrespect and Twitch. The Constitution states only one command twice. The Fifth Amendment says to the federal government that no one shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. The 14th Amendment ratified in 1868 uses the same 11 words called the due process clause. Long story short, people deserve the chance to defend themselves in court when these types of accusations are made. And my responsibility is to seek truth and report it. That's what I've attempted to do. Now, on a personal level, I'm going to just talk about how I feel about the situation for a second. I've given you all the facts, and I think you should come to your own conclusion. I do think that innocent until proven guilty is very important. I don't think anybody comes out of this clean, though. If Twitch knew about this, they should have reported it. Twitch wouldn't report it because if they did, it would be exposed that they read users' messages and they can't verify the ages of their users. Cody Connors jokes about this and Dan joking about this month before it was revealed that this was about minors. I feel like people should be a little bit more upset about the nonchalant nature that this whole situation was before this tweet came out and everyone's like, oh yeah, I've known about that for four years. That makes me mad. That makes Destin upset that so many people knew about this and didn't do anything. I've heard people talk about how, oh, it's about protecting a minor. How does Cody's post expose anything about the minor? It doesn't. It lets people know that a minor is involved. That's the reason this person was banned. Sponsors can choose not to sponsor him if that's what they believe. So if there is evidence that is accurate, 
I feel like more than we've decided to terminate the relationship should have happened. And that makes me uneasy. Did Twitch decide to cover this up and make jokes about it? Why did Dr. Disrespect react the way that he did when he said, there's a reason we're suing the F out of them? He seems upset. He talks about the money in that live stream, but this seems personal. It just seems different. If he's guilty, why would these people be acting this way like it's all a big joke? It's not funny. None of it's funny. These are felony accusations being made. Everything I just talked about in this video, something about it and the lingering questions just don't sit right with me. The whole thing stinks and no one walks away clean from this. Nobody does. Not the people that sat on it for four years. That's upsetting. Not the perpetrator. Should it be accurate? I want to know the truth. That's what I think everybody wants to know. They just want to know what actually happened. There's theories that messages were exchanged and that part is true. But maybe there's also the truth that an age wasn't known. It doesn't make it right. It doesn't change anything. But people want to know that context. People want to know all the context of this situation. So if this document that XQC is talking about comes out in the next few days, I, I certainly hope it clears things up for everybody. Because sitting on something like this for four years and handing somebody $10 million, who you believe to be sexting minors, is very disturbing. That's my take on the situation. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below.